Hello everyone, recently NVIDIA released two text-to-image generation models, Cosmos Predict 2 2B and Cosmos Predict 2 14B. In this video, we are going to learn how to run both models using Comfy UI. Before we begin, make sure you have updated your Comfy UI, so let's get started. The links I'm using here are in the description, so you don't need to type them manually. First, let's see from where we can download the Cosmos Predict 2 text-to-image models. Let's open this link in our browser. Here we go, you'll see a lot of models here. If you're looking for the 14B text image model, download the one called Cosmos Predict 214BT2I.pt. Just use the download button next to it. If you prefer the smaller 2B model, grab the file called Cosmos Predict 22BT2I.safatensors. Again, just hit the download button. We'll start by running the 2B model. After that, since I can't run the full 14B model on my computer, I'll show you how to use GGUF models in Comfy UI. So make sure to watch the entire video. Next, we need to download the text encoder. So let's open this link in our browser. Here we go. In here, we've got two old T5XXL models. If you have enough resources to run the FP16 model, then use that. If not, just use the FP8E4M3FN scaled model. I will be using the FP8E4M3FN scaled model. To download these models, use the download buttons. Next, we need to get the VAE file. Let's open this link in our browser. In here, we need to download the file called WAN 2.1 VAE.safatensors. And guys, if you've already used the WAN 2.1 video generation models, then you might already have this WAN 2.1 VAE file. If not, download this file. After the download, let's see where we need to put the files inside Comfy UI. Open the Downloads folder. First, let's select the file called Cosmos Predict 22BT2I.safatensors. Cut that file. Now open the Comfy UI portable folder, then go into the Comfy UI folder again. Next, find the folder called Models and open it. Inside that, find the Diffusion Models folder and open that as well. Finally, paste the file here. Go back to the Downloads folder, then select the text encoder, which is old T5XXL FP8. Cut the file. Again, go to the Comfy UI portable folder, then open the Comfy UI folder. Find the Models folder and inside that, find the folder called Text Encoders. Open that folder and paste the file there. Then go back to the Downloads folder. Select the VAE file called WAN 2.1 VAE.safatensors. Cut the file and again open the Comfy UI portable folder. Then go into the Comfy UI folder again. Open the Models folder. Next, find the VAE folder, open it and paste the file. Then launch Comfy UI. So in my case, I've already done that. Let's move on to Comfy UI. To refresh it, just press R on the keyboard. After that, let's start building the workflow for running the text-to-image models. First, let's add a node for loading the text-to-image model. Double-click on your left mouse button and search for Load Diffusion Model. Click on that. In the Unet Name field, select the Cosmos Predict 2 2B model. And if you are using the 14B model, then select that one. Next, add a node called Load Clip. Double-click and search for Load Clip, then click on it. Let's move this node here. In Clip Name, select Old T5 XXL FP8. If you're using FP16, then select FP16. After that, change the type from Stable Diffusion to Cosmos. Next, let's add a node for loading VAE. Double-click and search for Load VAE, then click on it. Let's move this new node here. In VAE name, select WAN 2.1 VAE.safatensors. Next, we're going to add our positive and negative prompts. Double-click and search for Clip Text Encode Prompt. Actually, you don't need to search, just click directly on Clip Text Encode Prompt. Now let's rename this node to positive prompt, then clone the node by right-clicking on it and selecting clone. After that, rename this new node to negative prompt. Next, we're going to add a K-sampler node. Double-click and search for K-sampler, then click on it. After adding the node, connect the model output of the load diffusion model to the model input of the K-sampler. Then connect the clip output of the load clip node to both the positive prompt and negative prompt nodes. Next, connect the conditioning output of the positive prompt to the positive input of the K-sampler. Then connect the conditioning output of the negative prompt to the negative input of the K-sampler. Then double-click and search for empty SD3 latent image. Click on it. In this node, we can set the resolution of our output images. Right now, I will be using 1024 for both width and height. Let's connect the latent output to the latent image input of K-sampler. After that, let's make some changes to the K-sampler node. I'll set the steps to 40. The CFG value will be 4.0 and the sampler name will be Euler. And for the scheduler, I will be using Keras. Next, let's add a VAE decode node. Then, connect the VAE output of the load VAE node to the VAE input of the VAE decode node. After that, add a save image node by clicking and dragging from the image output of the VAE decode node. After that, let's focus on our text prompts. In the positive prompt box, 
Type what kind of image you want to generate. In the negative prompt box, type what you don't want in your generated image. So I already have some samples prepared. Let's try them out. Let's copy and paste this into the positive prompt box. After that, we'll add the keyword bad quality to the negative prompt box. Then we'll run the workflow by clicking the run button and wait until the generation finishes. Here we go, the generation has finished. Let's open this image in a new tab. As you can see, it's a good result. There are some minor problems in this image, but overall it looks fine. Now, if you want more quality, I suggest using the 14B model. Now let's try a different text prompt. Let's select and copy this, paste it into the positive prompt box, then click the run button and wait until the generation finishes. Here we go, the generation has finished. Let's open the image in a new tab. Just like the previous image, this one also has some minor problems, but overall it looks fine. And that's it, guys. Wait a minute, in the beginning of this video, I told you that I cannot run the full 14B model on my computer. Well, we can use the same workflow for loading the 14B model. However, I am able to run smaller quantized versions of the 14B model that come in GGUF formats. If you want to use these quantized models, which come in GGUF formats, let me show you how we can run GGUF models in Comfy UI. First, we need to install a custom node pack called Comfy UI GGUF in Comfy UI. Use the Comfy UI manager to install this node pack. Open Comfy UI and click on manager. A small window will pop up. Click on custom nodes manager. After that, search for Comfy UI GGUF. Here it is. I've already installed it. So if you don't have this custom node pack, make sure you install it. Now let's close this manager. And then let's see from where we can download the GGUF models of the 14B model. The link is in the description. Let's open this link in our browser. Here we go. Click on files and versions. And here you can see there are a lot of quantized models. I suggest trying different models and seeing which one is best for you. So I will be using the Q8 model. Use the download buttons to download different quantized models. Well, I already have this file. After the download, let's see where we need to put the model in Comfy UI. Open the Downloads folder. Let's select the quantized model and cut it. Then open the Comfy UI portable folder and again open the Comfy UI folder. Find the folder called Models and open it. Then find the folder called Diffusion Models, open it and paste the file. After that, let's move on to Comfy UI. First, let's remove the connection from the Load Diffusion Model to the K Sampler. Then double click in any empty area and search for UNet Loader GGUF, click on it. Okay, I forgot to do one thing. We need to refresh Comfy UI after putting in the new model. So let's press R on the keyboard. Here we go. Now we can select the quantized GGUF model in the UNet Loader GGUF node. Let's select Cosmos Predict 214B Text 2 Image Q8 underscore 0 dot GGUF. After that, connect the model output of the UNet Loader GGUF node to the model input of the K sampler. That's it. Let's run the workflow and see the result. Here we go. The image generation has finished. Let's open this image in a new tab. Well, this generation looks better than the image generated with the 2B model. As I said before, try different models and see the result for yourself. Moving on, we can also do simple image to image generation with these models. Let's see how we can do that. Let's close this tab. So first, let's delete the empty SD3 latent image node. Then double click and search for load image, click on it. Next, let's select an image. I'm going to use this Fox image. After that, double click and search for VAE encode. Click on it, then connect the image output of the load image node to the pixels input of VAE encode. Next, connect the VAE output of load VAE to the VAE input of VAE encode. After that, connect the latent output of VAE encode to the latent image input of K sampler. For image to image generation, we need to decrease the denoise value. So I'm going to use a value of 0.55. Then let's change the positive prompt. Let's type a fox sitting on a rock, realistic, cinematic 4K quality. Right now, for image-to-image -image generation, I'm going to use the 2B model. It will be faster than the 14B model. Let's break one connection. Then, connect the model output of the load diffusion model to the model input of the K sampler. After that, let's run the workflow by clicking the Run button. Here we go, the image generation has finished. Let's open it in a new tab. Comparing it with the original image, this looks more real, I think. Now, we can try different denoise values to see how the image generation will look. Here we go, the generation has finished. Let's open this image in a new tab. It looks really cool. Anyway, guys, that's it. All I have to say is to try different models, try different prompts, and let me know about your results in the comment section. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And before you go, I want to show you one more thing. After I finished editing this video, Comfy UI just updated their Hugging Face repo. So in the updated repo, the 14B model will be available as Safa Tensors. Don't feel confused after seeing the Safatensers file, it's just the same full 14B model.